What's up everybody, this is Bill here, and in this video I wanna share with you my top three reasons why I think that Adam's MSP1 is the best Sousa phone on the market today. So for those who've been following me for a while, you know I've been playing on this horn for almost exactly a year now. So I've had a good opportunity to play with different ensembles, play in studio environments, play in live environments, really get to know the horn. So that being said, the instrument's downstairs, let's go unpack it and take a look. All right, so first things first, I just flew in from New York after a week of traveling. So uh, let's take a look at this bad boy and see how she looks. All right, we are all still in one piece. Actually, technically two pieces. Bell and everything else. It's my winter coat, extra padding, and valves work. It's always a good sign. And uh, I think I also have Close. Extra padding, and if you're gonna pay over charges to fly with this thing, you might as well get your money's worth. So also, side note, if you're traveling, something to keep in mind is you're pretty much guaranteed to get one of these. Um, TSA inspection, there's three of them in here right now from different flights. Um, when, you, when you put your horn together in the case, you can pretty much guarantee they're gonna open it and look at it. So put everything in an easy spot that goes back in an obvious position because if they put things back wrong, that's the, the number one way that instruments get damaged in flight. If, if there's too much stress in the wrong area or whatever. So just beware, expect that they're gonna open it. Also, side note, if you have a TSA lock like I have here, always bring a key because I learned this on the last trip. Um, I was traveling and I don't have my lock with this, and the TSA locked it up afterwards, and I had trouble getting into it uh, at the gate, which could be a big problem, so note from experience. All right, now that we're all unpacked, the first thing that I wanna share with you is the first thing I noticed when I played this horn is that it feels like a tuba. And I know that makes sense to a lot of you, duh, it is a tuba, but it's not, it's a sousaphone. And in my experience, a lot of the sousaphones that I've played over the years just feel different. They may slot different in different intervals. When you get to the upper register, it tends to get real squirrely where all those partials and intervals are. And this horn just plays like a tuba. And I think that's, to me, one of the best selling features of this horn is you don't have to make special concessions to make it sound good or to make it feel good as a player. It just plays like you would expect it to play. And any other concert tuba that you have, which is to me a first with this type of instrument, with a sousaphone, the fact that it doesn't feel like a sousaphone, just plays like a regular tuba, which is awesome. Now, number two, since we're talking about how the horn plays, let's talk about how it sounds, because honestly, that's the most important thing, is how the instrument sounds to your audience. And what I love about this horn is it has a very consistent bass tone, no matter what register that you're in. So when I play tuba as a bass instrument, my goal is to maintain a consistent bass tone. And ultimately, my goal is to sound like a bass a lot of times. So on previous gigs, I would bring this with me, which is basically a six band EQ, and allow me to adjust for different inconsistencies of the horn. A lot of times when I find myself going above a B flat or just anything in the staff and above, I, I lose the bass tone. I lose like the width of the sound, which is not consistent with how a double bass would sound or key bass or electric bass. So I would use this a lot of times to just kind of EQ my tone to make it consistent no matter what register I'm in. What I love about this is as I start to ascend into the upper register or anything in the staff or above, it maintains that consistent tone and I don't need to adjust anything uh, on my rig to make it sound good. And when you're playing through a bass amp, that's incredibly important because uh, certain notes would pop out. If I had like a really beefy low register, it would hit the amp hard, and then as I get higher, it almost disappear. And I think it's also great if you're playing even in a high school or college ensemble, you know, you're playing, your job is the bass instrument, no matter what you're doing. So uh, even if you're unmiked in any environment, you can still have a consistent sound in any register that you play in. So last but not least, number three, and I think the most talked about thing with this instrument is this right here. See this? This is the first valve trigger. So why is this important? Well, if you imagine playing a concert tuba, you're playing, you're adjusting, you have your hand on that first valve slide to be able to adjust and get everything in tune. Well, now you could do that and it's even easier than in pulling and pushing slides because you have everything on a spring-loaded trigger here. So imagine if you're playing um, a one and three combination, so like a low C, which is usually a sharp note on any brass instrument, that one and three combo. Just like a trumpet player may kick out the slide, now you have this spring-loaded trigger here that you can just kick out 
and get that in tune. So now I can play a low C or a low F or a low B natural or a low E natural and just kick that out and get it in tune. Also, if I'm playing anything that uses a first valve, so if you imagine you have a three valve instrument within seven different fingering combinations, you can play anything that you want on the horn. And around 40% of those use that first valve. So anything that I use the first valve for, I can just kick out that slide anytime that I want to get that in tune. It's really an easy concept. I don't know why everybody doesn't do it. And it really eliminates the need to have a fourth valve on a sousaphone. You can play anything in that normal range that you would normally play, and you can get it in tune, which is really, really, really great. So if you haven't had a chance to try one of these horns yet, go check Adams out anytime that you're at a tuba conference or a music conference or any of those things and they have these horns on display. Go give it a shot. I promise you'll love it. It's a game-changing instrument. It, it's very different than a lot of the horns that you've seen out there in the past. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment below, and follow me at Tuba Visionary. I'm on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the things Tuba Visionary.